Yeah, thank you uh, for coming and for being interested. The coconut, uh, of course, we all know they're beautiful to drink. We know that you know, young ones are sweeter. Um, but all of a sudden, um, from our own sort of uh, love of a, of a nice drink, it went into the hands of the UN and they created this sports drink culture about it. And, you know, it was, it's just a, a tidal wave of um, change in public perception and public health. It came about with a declaration that coconut would be the major beneficiary of climate change in terms of agricultural crops. And most um, people aren't ready for it. And the millions and millions of very poor farming families um, are seeing new opportunity, but also uh, struggling to meet demand. People are working so hard to provide um, the coconut products that the demand seems to be insatiable for. Um, I think 28% of all new products on Coles and Woolworths shelves last year all had coconut in the label. Everybody's making a coconut something because it sells. And not everyone knows why, not everyone cares. There's a lot of unscrupulous sort of uh, profiteering and people getting on the bandwagon. There's a lot of low-grade coconut oil being sold as cold-pressed virgin, you know, even extra virgin, which really only applies to olive oil. And so you don't, if you're, if you're buying by price tag or you're buying without smelling, tasting, uh, you can quite easily get disappointed and you can get a, a coconut oil that uh, isn't as good as the last time you had it, uh, or goes off more quickly, isn't as stable, doesn't have the same shelf life. Um, so I guess I'd do this to uh, hope that somebody's inspired enough to just see that it can just happen at home in simple appliances that we all have. It's not hard and the oil that you can make in this way is truly cold pressed virgin. It um, is better absorbed by the skin than a lot of expeller pressed or high heat oils. Some of the centrifuge oils are very clear and have a long shelf life, um, but still have different subtle qualities. Whereas this one is, um, this is a wet kitchen process that just uh, starts from your coconut milk, um, which I'll show you how easy it is to make and um, it ferments and this has been sitting here since five o'clock last night on uh, a little timer to turn it off every so often so it just keeps it at body temperature uh, between 35 and 40 and it runs through its process and the cream that's um, emulsified coconut water and cream held together by natural gums in the coconut gradually uh, separate and then the, just the cream part is drawn off and um, kept at temperature until um, I'm anxious to see how well it's gone but um, you all have a chance to come up and look in there and we'll ladle some out and so um, yeah, there's just a thin layer on top of the, the pot, which is um, what we call um, coagulated coconut protein. And um, we take that off. And underneath, you've got your crisp, crystal clear virgin coconut oil, which we can just ladle off. And below that is, is water. So um, I should start with um, making the milk. Stop talking. There's lots of other things I want to show you. Um, the most important being is um, there's a, a Polynesian uh, wisdom about choosing, um, choosing good coconuts to plant. And it's not really in uh, our culture. It's really just been revived. People think a coconut's a coconut. But before all that, some people have been looking at them for thousands of years and seeing boys and girls based on different traits of the fruit. Now, um, there's simple, simple uh, characteristic differences, but these ones with the blue are boy coconuts. They've shot straight up. They're uh, 
fronds are very narrow and generally tend to be longer, sometimes even with little um, like nipple on the bottom or pointing. And th these, are, these are the boys. Um, a lot of times these are weeded out of the nursery and not planted because they don't have as many fruits as the girl coconuts or more predominantly female. Um, Sure, any time. Um, for, for making the oil and getting it to work, um, it's preferable if they're, they're dry, been on the ground, they say, for a couple of months. And there's a little flyer here with in instructions on how to do that, um, the subtleties of it. But generally, um, this one is not quite as, as brown as this one. This, is, this will make a beautiful milk, which will stay in the fridge, and you can pour it, uh, you know, three or four days. And it's, it's better, really, for a, for a utility milk, whereas the milk we make from this one, it really does want to separate out into cream on top, water below. You can still stir it up, and it's, it's all delicious. I mean, you, you never stop once you start. And, but, but really for getting oil you want nuts that have even shot already is fine, but been on the ground for a while. Um, I'd, I'd show you this. Uh, this is the germ pore of the coconut. That's where it, sh it sprouts from. Um, this did this one is a girl, it's very rounded, it's been selected for, especially because it's more rounder, higher volume of water. This one's also tending to be uh, female because it shoots naturally out of the part of the husk which is the easiest to get through. The softest part of the husk is right over the third eye. The girl coconut will find its way out through this soft part, even if it's pointing down like that, it will find its way out through there, be usually thicker at the base, and when it grows up, it tends to have the husk just turning in at the bottom, which makes it much easier to take off. Um, and also much lobier, so the, the, these fronds are very rounded and those are the ones that you want to plant. This is progressively selecting for more and more rounder coconuts. The, our um, marine parks or our, our government is more or less uh, decided there's a long one that's a boat coconut that washed around and the round ones are all domesticated and cultivated so we should weed them out. And they've been doing this on our islands you know, with incredible arrogance. But really, this type of selection is what we have inherited. There's brilliant coconuts in cans from all places that have been brought here. And I just saw it and took it on as a mission myself to get the best of the genetics that was here and spread it around. So we have a lot of dwarf varieties here. We have a lot that are predominantly female coconuts, plenty that are feral, plenty that are predominantly male but nobody is weeding them out. So I thought I would induct gardeners into this campaign to make um, better coconuts for, you know, for our future. So that said, I'll, um, I'll do the little demo on making the milk and then show you how it cooks into oil. So this is um, something they invented in Sri Lanka in the 50s. Um, there's another more common method that's just a, a flat blade like this that you sit on and you scrape on a flat blade. This is the most common way that people are, are scraping coconut. Um, we want the water to go in, so we and by the way, this, this, this is uh, more, more male coconut, more longer. Um, 
quite um, relatively thick um, kernel, they would say, but um, the dwarf one might have a thinner kernel, but that kernel in the dwarf one would also be sweeter, so it affects the quality of the milk that you make. And anyway, this is, uh, I try to think how I do it in, in the kitchen at home, but uh, yeah, just for our home kitchen, this, this is good enough, you know, one or two coconuts every night or two. And it's that, yeah, yeah, it, it never moves on our bench. I will explain that uh, a lot of people are afraid of getting the brown layer, which they call the tester layer, into their cream or their milk because they think it will discolor it. It's not really true. You can grate right into the shell and still come up with a lovely clean oil. This, is, um, this layer is, is actually like an uh, electrical di dielectric. This is an uh, insulator between the, the inside cathode process and the outside uh, anode process in what I would say God's carbon batteries. So you have the electrolyte inside um, conducting um, millivolts that you can measure. You can put your multimeter into a fresh coconut and, and really you know, acknowledge the vitality and, and the circuits that are involved within the shell. So. Anyway, this can all go in, um, you know, you, alternatively, you know, you can scrape it all out with a knife and just blend it up, so long as you get it in a, in a bag with some water, and um, I might put a little bit from this one too. This one's slightly younger, hasn't fully browned off, but the shell is dark brown. Uh, a little bit of hot water just to um, clean that off. Quite often I just use the bottom of the coconut. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be hot at all. It's just, this just means that the tool gets cleaned in the process. And if it's a little bit warm, um, it's, it's easier to extract the cream. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's quite hot. Um, oh, you wouldn't do boiling water because you're about to put your hands in it. You know, it's you know it's just warm, so it's comfortable, and um, clean hands. Uh, you would recognize it as um, curtains. Yeah? Yeah. So these are sewn by Lady in Cairns just from curtain shear. But most of your sprouting bags aren't strong enough to do this on a regular basis. So yeah, it's just polyester. Doesn't pick up the, the smell of the coconut, but you can, you know, we, we reuse it regularly, um, just rinsing it under the tap and letting it dry. But um, it's good to have, um, you know, a nice strong bag and this process, um, the little bit of water helps break down the gums that are in the, that are holding the emulsion of cream and water together, or keeping the coconut skim milk and the cream together. So the gums are uh, diluted by the water as well. And what we would do is uh, enzymatically, the enzyme from the water starts releasing all the oils from the fiber and you know it's something that I do to get out of cooking you know I make the cream and and Jackie you know cleans the fish does everything else and uh, and it, you know it's it's just become a, a, a nice way that we we cook most of our food in coconut milk because it's free
Um, we've been doing this for a long time with uh, you know, a mechanical grater and doing large batches and making ice cream and um, yogurt and things, but it's only quite recently that we read the instructions on making the oil and followed them and was surprised that it's really quite, quite simple. And um, having this as your sort of home kitchen technique um, is a good start. So really, you know, there's some people who make a beer can crusher or a plastic bottle crusher out of stainless steel that would be quite good for scaling this up just to get a fair bit more out of it. But really that's about it and, you know, some places they'll add more water and get a second pressing for a lighter milk. Um, we just, you know, more or less straight into compost or the garden. But this can be processed into coconut flour. It can be dried, then milled. There's still a fairly high, um, you know, oil content in there. I didn't get it all out. But uh, we can just keep an eye on that and it will stratify, it will more or less separate into you know, water and a little bit of cream on top. Um, to do the oil, they would say some places, big coconuts like this, uh, you know, 12 or 15 coconuts, you could get a liter of oil. Um, what I, you know, I usually do about 25 and there's some of them are very thin flesh. Uh, I do them all the grating very quickly and I wring it out in like um, a much bigger curtain and um, yeah, more or less have a tub full of, full of uh, probably that, there was probably maybe 10, 10 litres of, of cream and water that I separated out just by um, leaving it in a dehydrator for a little while, starting to gradually bring the fermentation temperature up. Uh, after a couple of hours, I could drain that water off the bottom and put the remaining cream into this um, cooker. So that's um, really all that happens. You, you make the milk and keep the temperature stable, more or less 38 degrees. Someone sort of said is perfect, but I think anywhere between 36 and 40. If it's not hot enough, um, which happened in the dehydrator, it kept it all a bit too cool. It, it stayed coagulated and didn't actually separate. But if, if you get it, you know, around about 40 degrees, you'll get this layer on top that you can just... Um, no, not that one, this one. And take the whole thing off, and uh, anyone's welcome to have a look in. Or can you use that um, cream? Yeah, this this is um, dried in in a lot of places and turned into uh, like an animal feed, and uh, it's um, it's protein. It's uh, coagulated coconut protein, so about six percent protein in a coconut. So if it if you dry it. You can mix it with uh, mints and they have recipes for hamburger extender and all sorts of things. But um, we sort of get enough of that off so you can see the oil. And then um, it might be. Uh, Missing a bucket, but I will just. Uh, yeah, that, that's the oil. This is actually um, the batch I did before. Um, that's, that's the drying, and there's a post production stage afterwards where you dry it out, and um, that makes it, takes away some, any sour taste, and uh, makes it sort of have a, a longer shelf life. But because um, I'm without a precious bucket, I'll just do it like that. And we probably... It's 
really not more complicated than that. We like a ladle that's got a bit of a lip on it, if you do a good batch. So, yeah, from 20, about say 20 coconuts, we'll end up with probably two and a half liters of oil altogether. Yeah. Not us, no, no, we use it every day, we spread it already. They, yeah, yeah, if you don't have to wait for Woolies to have a sale, you know, for the good stuff. But there, there are some good brands that the big supermarkets have, and um, you know, there's a lot of brands in the market that are actually deodorized coconut oil that is being sold as a virgin, you know, cottage industry, small scale hand processing. Um, the, the European market prefer um, no coconut odor for baking, for recipes. So they're saying, oh, we'd like odorless. Uh, anyway, um, that's, that's why I thought it was important to, to show that you can do it for yourself because you don't want to be paying $15 for a jar of something going. It's a little bit cheaper, but you know, you don't get the, the, you know, like this stuff, you, you, you immediately feel like I've had something that works with my body. This is made at body temperature and it's absorbable through the skin. Some of the other oils won't go through the skin nearly as, as easily. Um, they've just been left out, rancid in the sun or dried. They've got molds growing on them. Um, then they end up having to be refined and bleached and deodorized to get back into a saleable product. Is there any way, you were talking earlier about um, purchasing coconut oil from the supermarket, but is there any way that they deodorize that they may have yeah, Yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of tricky stuff put on labels. There's, there's no, no additives to make it last longer. It's just, um, how could you say, um, you know, uh, killed off. Um, to, to, to be, uh, and I wouldn't say it's killed off completely. It's just, um, if you taste it and uh, you know, you feel like, you know, it makes you cough, or you feel a catch in the back of your throat, it's probably, you know, a, an oil that's got a little bit of moisture content and a little bit of rancidity that um, you know, finds its way out through the oil after 12 months on the shelf. You just don't know how long it's been there. Um, this oil we'd probably keep in the cupboard, say, for, for a year and a half, quite safely. But some of the other ones probably have a slightly longer shelf life. But, I mean... In uh, Yeah, in the cupboard. It's, yeah, no, it's happy to be liquid. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm a strong believer that coconuts just die in the fridge. You know, this was God's idea before refrigeration. Yeah. And we're getting all these ones from Thailand that uh, experienced this cold death. Um, it's, uh, yeah, what happens, they end up tasting sweeter because in the cold, the complex sugar molecule that you want from the young coconut has more or less unwound and become simple sugar and it just ends up being something that feeds you know, digestive uh, you know, bad bacteria. So this uh, last stage, you know, you can, you don't have to use filter paper, you can just use a cotton bud, uh, sorry, not a cotton bud, a little cotton wool ball in the bottom of a funnel just give it something that it'll flow through. It's nice and warm. It flows out fairly easily. And um, get impatient when you've got too much of it. Yeah. But um, this this is uh, like a final stage. They call it a double boiler so you um, yeah you more or less half fill a, a you know a pot with water and you put this in so that that's submerged and just simmer on the stove for about 15 minutes and that will um, more or less 
vaporize or volatilize any of the sort of sour components that are left from the fermentation. When you're ladling it out, it's quite easy to dig in too deep to get the last of it, and then you get you pick up water, and um, the coagulated protein on the bottom on on the on sitting on top of the skim milk. It's also usable, but that is sort of like how bad flavors get introduced. So really the last bit is, becomes your B grade coconut oil. Uh, the first bit is your A grade, but you know, that was the first batch we did, what we call our B grade. It's still crystal clear and no solids in the bottom. Uh, and this is the only drying process we've done. We just let it simmer for 15 minutes. With the lid on? Uh, yeah, just get it boiling. And once it's boiling, just turn it right down and you know, 15 minutes, there are other, other methods that are in this manual that I'll make available to you all that um, uh, you can actually put it in a cupboard for a week on about, about 50 degrees. All these things will just stabilize any, any volatiles that are, that are left from the fermentation and give it a longer shelf life and, and clarify it. It gets much clearer and that's what you want. Um, you don't really want to buy an oil that's got a you know, a whole lot of who knows what um, coming out of solution in the bottom of the jar. Um, you know, those, uh, you know, though they can come from this method as well, it's, um, yeah, it's just a, a question of um, quality and developing the taste buds to go, oh, that's really good. That one uh, you know, I can have by the spoonful, that one I can swish in my mouth and heal my teeth. Um, you know, this one I can you know, safely give to you know, so-and-so that uh, you know, really wants the health benefit. In five minutes, I just want to show you one other life skill. Um, this, you can tell how old or how good a coconut is by the sound. Um, everyone has their preference. The young jelly ones, uh, full of water, uh, have a very low note. You can hear it's very watery. As they get a little bit older, the, the sound, the note changes, probably. That's, they're still quite, quite young. They have this soft jelly flesh, like I said before, that's going to turn into that uh, tester layer. So the jelly flesh becomes this brown layer. That's vitamin E, that's tocopherol. Uh, a lot of people grate that out of the coconut. Don't want to get it in the batch, but that's really um, you know, one of the healthiest parts. Um, anyway, what we do with a coconut that's a little bit older than the jelly stage is um, we add, add probiotics to it. You think a guy could find a cocoa tap? Oh, I think I put it in here. So with this, this is just a very quick way. You go in till you hear the shell, and uh, if you can't just keep pushing straight through, it's because the coconut's a little bit older. You turn it upside down, and the weight of the coconut just impales itself. Um, it needs to have that tea on so you can get it out again mainly, otherwise you could just hammer a bit of pipe in or any number of simple things. Um, what we do is drink it down a little bit. And then this is like a liquid broad spectrum probiotic. Uh, a very good, you know, high, expensive, like $60 a bottle. But we can make this bottle last forever. We just put a little bit in there. And um, put one of these um, clever airlock devices in it. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, this indispensable bit of laboratory equipment. And, and that, that stops any other airborne bacteria being introduced to it. You can leave it out in the sun for 15 or 20 minutes or uh, whatever you like, just experiment. So long as the, the input is good, um, you, the, the coconut water has three sets of chromosomes it gives to whatever you put in it. It has the right balance of um, electrolyte for anything that's biocompatible. 
and it has enough sugar to you know, turn into alcohol. So, you know, just um, uh, that's how I started, you know. I was a kid putting raisins in coconuts and trying to, you know, make alcohol. And then I <laughs> thought being healthy was much more important, you know. But um, anyway, that, that simply, you know, in 15 or 20 minutes, that'll start getting a little bit tangy. And, um, you know, then it's like, a, you know, something that will rebuild your guts. And that's, um, you know, that's why I do it, because, it, you know, it's all um, you know, av available to, to, um, to farm in our community. The trees need to be farmed. They, they can't just be raided or run up and steal a bunch here and there. You need to understand the tree well enough to encourage it to give and to know what it is that you're harvesting. All these are, you know, lowered down on the rope. All these particular green dwarf nuts are um, you know, germinated if they're old enough by drying them out and um, getting them to sprout, like um, this fellow here. Um, and you know, basically, I select or any good good dwarf ones. Uh, I'll, I'll propagate them. Uh, if they're a, a nice uh, girl, or this one in particular, girl-boy mix, long pointy coconut, but yet still with very lobey leaves. Um, these are all worth planting, and um, they have the capacity to, to yield very heavily, and you know, a lot of people don't want them to yield at all. They want to inject chemicals into them and see if they can you know, make all the flowers fall off. I mean, there's so many hideous approaches to the dualistic uh, you know, way of seeing the coconut, you know, good but a problem, uh, rather than actually allowing it to reveal the truth to you. It, um, you know, nature will be your teacher, but you have to first get past that mindset of this is, a, this is problematic, this is too hard, this is uh, you know, too labor intensive, could never happen in Australia. All those ideas are, you know, are, are very, um, retrograde, they've thought up in another time, and not really helpful, because, you know, I've, I, just, just, to, just to put that idea to a stop, lots of insurance companies, banking in Panama, um, they, they are, they're running a racket of overstating the risk. It's really clear, and the Douglas Shire Council got in a lot of trouble for saying really silly things in their coconut uh, management plan about the 150 deaths a year from coconut. These are all memes that they're fed by an insurance racket that goes on anywhere somebody has money. And basically there's, there's only four true coconut deaths that were part of the assembling the statistics. And three of those four was from monkeys on ropes that were pissed off with their handlers. And, and I thought, yeah, that's right. You go to these countries, they say a coconut has three eyes. He knows who to hit and who to miss. You know, if you're an American lawyer, you know, stay in the car. Um, they don't want that business plan where they have a wholesome industry and a tradition. Okay, thank you very much. All right. For that. Thank you.